right, we are recording and I'm so happy to see everyone. It is so good to see your faces. Um, hello and welcome to At Home and Health. Each week we aim to uplift and support wellness professionals working from home during quarantine by providing interactive conversations with experts on today's timely topics. I'm Amanda LaPlante. I am the host of Get Real to Heal on KWRH 92.9 FM and I'm a certified integrative nutrition health coach. As a reminder, a little conversational etiquette for the next half hour. We want this to be an interactive experience and we love your questions and comments. So just pop those into the chat box. We'll get to those as fast as we can. You can also opt to raise your hand if you'd like, but just a little heads up, this is being recorded and will be shared. So you'll be on camera with us. Um, we are excited to connect. We're glad that you're here. And today's topic, topic is movement. And before we start the conversation with our guest experts, a little quick shout out to our organizers of the series, Casey Limmer and Kate Burris of Gateway Wellness Associates. Hi, hi. And Jessica Torrey of Acadia Healthcare. Uh, ladies, what are you hoping to learn today from our conversation? I feel like I learn something every week from conversations. I now have my blue blocker glasses. I have started having smoothies with antioxidants and immune boosters for lunch. So I'm looking forward today to, to find just a little nugget to add to my everyday health. That's just gonna help me improve um, and get some ideas for movement because I feel like I've been spending an inordinate amount of time in front of this ear computer. So. Absolutely, Jessica. I would say I had, you know, good intentions to get a lot of movement in and this time and it hasn't always worked out that way. Um, I'm definitely more of like a morning person. So I'm interested to hear about the timing of exercise and movement and how that, um, you know, can benefit us. So I think that's one thing that I'm really interested in hearing about. Okay, well, we'll definitely try to get to all that and more as we move today. So let's introduce our featured experts today. Kate Burris has been practicing yoga for over 20 years and teaching for more than 10. She's on the faculty at two schools in the region and yoga schools in the region and teaches a 200 hour yoga teacher training at both of them. She's currently working on her 1000 hour yoga therapy degree. Her aim is to offer students the understanding that yoga is more than just physical exercise. It's an understanding of the self and the world that desires acceptance and compassion for all things. Welcome Kate. And Ryan Morgan is a strength and conditioning specialist who's passionate about teaching people how to exercise the right way for their unique bodies and how to improve their lifestyle so they can extend their life, prevent disease, and live without limits. After three years as a Major League Baseball player with the Kansas City Royals, Ryan opened Pursuit Fitness in Maryland Heights where he helps people 45 and older focus on making the rest of their life the best of their life. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Amanda. So excited to talk with both of you. There's so much wisdom and knowledge in your brains that I need for my little very out of shape body at this moment in time. So, so where to begin? Um, I think, you know, with everybody being at home, um, we're spending more time in front of the screens and indoors than maybe we're used to. Uh, hopefully people are getting out and enjoying the sun. We hope we're seeing more of that. But, um, you know, everyday movement that's that's grounding and stabilizing and just working in movement um, every day at home is something that I'd love to touch on first. And I know Kate, you have some thoughts on that to start us out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I found in the last few weeks that talking to most of the folks in my community, um, there's been this kind of expectation that now might be a time where I incorporate something new, a new routine, a new something to bake, something to, um, you know, like now's the time I'm gonna get really fit. And a lot of the dialogue that I've been having with folks is a little bit more about, you know, there's there's a way to move that's performance based, we call that vishesha, and there's a way to move that's therapeutic based and we call that chikitsa. And this is more of a therapeutic time, right? And so I'm running into a lot of folks that are struggling with this unnecessary expectation that something brand new might, should be introduced to stay productive and accomplish. Uh, and the reality is, is that what's working most is that we take the movement that's already existing in order to survive the life that has the thing and incorporate a way things in a more stable way. 
So like that's a kind of person, she's looking to have something that she can incorporate that, that takes that energy that she has in the morning and amplifies what she's already doing. And so I'm talking to a lot of people about um, how much movement it takes to get like from bed to that first cup of coffee. And what does that movement look like? Can it maybe be extended? Do you have an extra couple of minutes that the walk up and down the stairs is twice instead of once, right? Or as you're making the coffee, attention to movement is really, really powerful. There's a lot of movements we habitualize and we don't see how they're unstable or we don't see how there's effort in them that's not needed. And so in the things, those first five minutes of your morning, what does that already feel like and what does that already look like? So the assignments, if you will, the community have been like, watch what you're already doing and see if you can find where that feels like there's too much tension in the body or there's not enough and then tend to those movements that already exist. And you just take these really little steps to increase whatever it is you find is lacking. It's hard to blanket that, right? Because then it becomes very prescriptive. So if you find that in the morning you wake up and you go straight to that coffee maker, you make a cup of coffee and shoulders are hunched up around your ears. There's a tension in the jaw because like the day is starting and maybe the caffeine's not there yet. And yesterday was hectic and we don't know what it looks like, right? can you anchor into that? You already have a movement pattern there, right? It's not exercise, but you're making a series of movements. Can you, while you make that coffee, increase the steps somehow, right? Like walk a little bit further throughout the kitchen and then also in places of stillness, can you check in and see, okay, I've been clenching my jaw since I got out of bed and told my kids to go outside or whatever it was, right? or I'm holding my shoulders like this and there's no reason for it. And so you take that routine or ritual that already exists, observe it, and then try to soften in. So in this therapeutic way of moving, it's always kind of minimal muscular effort to achieve the task. So there's not unnecessary tension in the body. And so that's kind of where I've been starting. And then I talk to folks about throughout the day, what are those things that are already happening and how can we look at them and figure out ways to kind of expand on them. I love that. And Ryan, I know I've been into your um, facility and you talk a lot about people working with their own unique bodies, their, their different, differing abilities, um, tension in the body, stiffness, things like that. Um, so, so similarly, as Kate has said, you know, just bringing in uh, more movement and more awareness to movement and so on. I know you work with people a lot on that in strength and conditioning routines. So taking that one step further, what would be some of your thoughts around that topic? Well, you know what? I, I think right now, um, if we're talking about the time we're in right now, you have to, you have to think about also what, what somebody is going to enjoy, what's going to bring them more um, value and what's going to de-stress their already very stressful life right now. So I love... I love the idea of making things easy on people. What Kate said, all of those are great ideas. But what I have found is that a lot of people are wanting to get outside because we're inside so much right now. And taking advantage of the sunshine that you're getting, the vitamin D. And, uh, you know, for us, it's not just about exercise to improve performance. Kate mentioned that there's one way, you know, for improve performance. And that's all about what we do here in the gym. But let's also let's also get outside and just go for a walk and just take a second to get your mind off of everything. That's a huge, a huge part of moving too. Uh, and, you know, just getting up and down frequently, you know, when you're at a desk job, you know, those are things important, but take advantage of getting outside right now. That's what I've been telling people. And we're, we're actually in my gym. Um, we're doing something called the quarantine games and, and we're challenging people and they get points for going outside and doing things that are, uh, important, I think, at this point in time. Um, so it's not just about building the strength that we do with the weights and things that we do in the gym here. It's about that as well. Um, but, you know, of course, there's a, the way to look at it from a performance side, but we're, we're, we're doing that with uh, the workouts that we do inside the gym. But I think there's an important piece outside of the gym, too. I love that. And vitamin D is so incredibly important for optimal immune function, super important, and bringing more joy. I like what you said there. Um, you know, and Kate, more mindfulness and more, you know, grounding. And then Ryan, you said more joy. And I love all of that. 
know, I had an interesting conversation with a health coaching client of mine this past week, and um, she was trying to work in more movement, just feeling very unenthusiastic about it because all of her routines had changed. And, um, and we, we came up with the idea, well, she came up with the idea because as you know, in coaching, it's really about bringing out the brilliance in that individual. It's not really about me. It's, Hey, what do you think would work for you? And let's dive into that. And, um, came up with the idea of a movement menu, which I thought was really interesting for right now. So what do you love to do? You know, how do you love to move? She's like, well, I love to dance and I love TikTok dances and I love gardening and I love, and all of these different things. And it started getting her excited about ways that she could move again. And it gamified it for her because she created a little graph with different colors. She's very artistic. And it was just, it was a really fun way to bring more joy into movement. Um, so I love that, that, you know, you guys are just finding different ways to work with people and get them excited and get them more mindful about how to move. Um, let's talk about, you know, a lot of people are experiencing anxiety just with the change in routine, just like my client had this week. Um, you know, I know Kate and Ryan, you guys talk a lot about just being mindful and breathing. Um, and Kate, you talk about breath work for anxiety as well. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the breath is a really powerful tool. We use it quite a bit. Uh, the adage in uh, in the community is often that you know we use the body to tend to the physicality of our our being, and we use the breath to tend to the mind. So it's a really direct correlation to the state of the mind. And there's lots of different um, breath works or pranayams is the word for it that are considered to produce a specific aim. So you can breathe in a way that increases energy, you can breathe in a way that cools the body, you can breathe in a way that stimulates the body. And what's really lovely about, well, that's actually an interesting way to say, it. I was gonna say it was lovely about what's happening right now. This isn't the right way to put it, but- we, <laughs> I think we share that of, sentiment though. We're right? all trying to find the bright side, right? We're all trying to find the bright side. We're all trying to find um, the bright side. And there are, there are, there are, glimmers of hope. There are glimmers of promise that are coming out of this where we're all becoming more aware in so many different right. parts of life. So yeah, continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what is nice is that while it's really hard to be prescriptive and I'm sure Ryan, you can relate to this. It's really hard to be prescriptive with movement and breath when every individual body is so very specific. Um, what is interesting though, is in the current situation, we all kind of have a common aim, which is to find stability in a really unstable place. And so most folks are, whether they actually observe it or not, in a place of more anxiety than they usually are because things are just uncertain and we were thrust into uncertainty without the steps to, to be able to garner tools before we found ourselves having to combat it. And so what is lovely about that is that the thing that is similar in us is a basic standard rhythm of breathing and it's called the breath body and it's quite simply the observation of an inhale an exhale and a pause okay? and it's not about changing the breath it's just about by putting attention on that breath rhythm there's a sense of presence that happens right so whatever is happening in the mind like all the things i have to do today the concern for the kids the partner the home the business all these things are effectively, you know, the mind being concerned about how it was before and how it's going to be in the future. It, the mind doesn't really tend to stay in the right now, but the body does. And so when you can turn your attention to how am I breathing and recognize, you can do this at any moment. You guys can do this right now as I'm speaking, right? You turn the attention to the rhythm of your breath. It's something that is felt all the time. We always are breathing in and out no matter what, right? And so if you can kind of pull some of that awareness away from the concerns that are happening and watch how your body feels and see, okay, wait, I'm only breathing in my chest. Like my chest is the only thing that's rising and falling. Instead, can I pull that down a little bit deeper and actually like let my belly soften on the inhale and let my belly recede on the exhale by just anchoring to what's happening right now the anxiety of what was and what's coming starts to settle itself because you're putting your attention not on those concerns or stories or ideas or hopes, but just right now. What you find is right now, I'm sitting in this chair. I can feel my feet, I can feel my breath. Nothing is really wrong. I'm okay, I'm stable. The body is relatively well. 
I've potentially been fed. I have a roof, I have clothing, right? And so the stability that already exists that the mind tends to ignore, it's the attention that it's due. And so there's a lot of, it's really just that simple. There's, and what I talked to a lot of folks about is how many times throughout the day can you just pause and look for a breathe in that is your whole belly and a breathe out that is your whole belly. And then there's this pause that we often forget. There's a really natural pause at both ends of the breath, but the one after your exhale is a very stabilizing place to be aware of. It's the place that um, the nervous system shifts from sympathetic, which is fight or flight, and into parasympathetic, which is rest and relax. So every little exhale is sympathetic and every, or I'm sorry, every inhale is sympathetic and every exhale is parasympathetic. And that's on purpose. But when we shorten the breath or stay ch stuck in the chest or it's heavy inhale and not a lot of exhale, we start to shift into too much fight or flight. So if you can fully exhale and just let your breath pause for a minute, and then bring the inhale back in. Not only is this an attention game for the mind, it's quite literally a physiological game for the nervous system. You're increasing the time spent in that part of the rhythm that is about rest and restore, and you're decreasing the time spent in that part of the rhythm that's about fight. And so, because we're all kind of in this state, can be kind of prescribed across the board, right? Without any sort of um, negative ramifications. There are times where we wanna be in fight or flight, where we wanna be stoking the fire, I've yet to really find anyone right now that needs to stoke their fire of concern any more than it already is. So that's definitely not around concern, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's called the breath body and it's just full inhale that expands the belly, complete exhale that softens the belly and a little bit of attention to the pause before you breathe in again. Awesome. Okay, I love that. <laughs> I love that yeah. you do that. And um, it's so important to do that frequently during the day right now, especially with how much anxiety everybody has. Uh, that is something that we put at the end of every single workout. We do a minute of that type of breathing and focusing on the pause, getting somebody back in a parasympathetic nervous system function is crucial to recovery from a workout. So, you know, throughout the day though, we're all, I mean, there's probably 90% of the time we're in sympathetic nervous system function at this point for most people. So, the more often we can do that, the better. I love the way that you explained that. That's great. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And Ryan, I've, I've witnessed that in your workouts and I thought it was so unique because I don't, now I haven't been to a ton of different gyms, right? But, but many of them that I've been to, there's not a lot of awareness around that parasympathetic, sympathetic, switching on and off. And really, I think what's, what's interesting about that is at your facility, you really focus on working with people who are middle-aged, so 45 plus, and a lot of times you've told me uh, those people have maybe not ever had an exercise routine. They're just getting started. They've gotten to that age, um, you know, where they've been sedentary for a bit. They've been working, raising kids, doing all of the things, right? And suddenly they start to realize they're a little stiffer in the morning. They aren't feeling so good. And maybe they've got some, you know, starts of disease states happening. So, you know, how, how important is it to just be tapping into to these different states, um, you know, as people are getting into physical activity at a later age? I think I think it's super important. We, the worst thing you can do is jump into something you're not ready for. And have, if you've been somebody that hasn't exercised uh, regularly for 10 years, to jump into something um, that is, you know, something popular like high intensity interval training or, uh, you know, something that you're not ready for, you're easily going to get injured by doing the wrong thing. So building up the foundations, the breathing is so important. Teaching somebody how to diaphragmatically breathe is a huge uh, part of, of learning how to use your core the right way um, and building the basics so that you don't get injured, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks into your exercise program, it's, it's crucial. Um, and we look at exercise as a way to enjoy life better. So we're not there just to make people sweat and give them the, you know, the most calories burned. That's not our purpose. Uh, our purpose is to help you live a better life. And in order to do that, it has to be a well-balanced program. Uh, things that Kate talks about are very important. We, we are not experts on that, but those are things that we, we think people need just a well-balanced exercise program, not just how many calories can I burn? How hard can I sweat today? 
Uh, it's not a, a game of let's get as fit as we can in a month. It's let's, let's get as fit as we can in the next year, you know, and, and let's do that in a very sustainable way to where we don't get hurt. I love that. Yeah, we've got a comment that popped in here. Um, let's see, several really good ones. First off, going back to the beginning of the conversation, Jessica says, if you get a new puppy, you'll get lots of steps in without even realizing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I love. Uh, I've also got a comment in here. Um, I'm 45 and finding the body is just not working the same. Um, I've had a bum elbow for a few months now. Any low impact movement ideas for something like that? Yeah. Um... Well, with the elbow, there's a lot of things, I mean, without knowing exactly what's going on with it, um, any type of, of flexion or extension of the elbow is going to be hard to do right now, but uh, depending on what it is, but there's lots of things you can do. And honestly, we, we focus on lower body exercises even more than upper body because your legs are what carry you through life. So there's um, a ton of different ways you can, you can just work the lower body that are going to give you, you know, numerous benefits uh, for strength and balance and flexibility. Uh, and so even without training the upper body, if you can't do anything at all with that elbow right now, there's, there's tons of things that you could do to, to just get started with, with movement. And I think getting started, just getting started is, is, is good advice. It's, you know, just start. I think a lot of people get analysis paralysis about, you know, where do we start? Um, so I love, I love just encouraging people to get out and take the first steps, no matter what that might be. Um, so people that haven't, so one thing that's come to mind for me is a lot of the people on this call are in, um, mental health, um, wellness professionals that maybe, you know, like me as a coach sitting all day long, um, listening intently and leaning forward while I do it. And the next thing I know I'm crunched and hunched and, and it's just bad. So for people yeah. who are sedentary a lot, what are some pieces of advice that you have for them? Um, you know, especially now that we're all finding ourselves not just sitting across from someone in a chair, but really leaning into a camera over a desk for hours at a time. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about um, sitting. That's in my notes. I was like, what can I say in 30 minutes? <laughs> and one is combating sitting, right? And I think in general, this is a thing now even more than ever. Um, myself and my my personal experience of the work that I do now being on a computer and not like in a space with moving bodies, I've really had to manage what my body's telling me about how I'm using it differently and how it doesn't feel stable and there is tension creeping in and it's all the neck and shoulders and head, right? So mm -hmm. for about every half inch that the head moves forward of the spine, it puts eight to 10 pounds of unnecessary weight on the spine. And so the muscles in the spine have to start working even harder. Uh, and then the body's so amazing, what happens is it goes, oh, okay, you wanna hold your head like this all the time? Cool. So then it makes this stuff called fascia, which is uh, almost like a basket weave. And it weaves all this over the back of the body so that it just stays like this. So that the muscles don't have to hold it like this, the fascia does, and the fascia requires less calories. Gosh, that's so helpful. Right? The body, right? Isn't it? It's trying to be helpful, right? Because the body right. wants to send all those calories to your brain, right? So it doesn't want the muscles to have to hold you that way. It wants to produce a different system that does it. And then before you know it, this is your new standard, right? And this is how we see posture decline in olding, oh, age, um, maturing bodies like myself, right? And then it becomes even more difficult. Actually, stacking the head on the spine can be not possible for some folks until they go through some therapeutic movement. So it's a really dangerous place to be. And we were already there with phones and screens and driving and sitting in offices. And now we're just there even more so. And there's a really intelligent way of combating that through therapy, through like fascial rolling and strengthening and stretching. But then there's also just this immediate moment where the tension headache starts, right? And so, this combating of sitting, it's, it's pretty simple to start to wrap your mind around if you think about the things that I do all day long, I need to find time to do the opposite, right? So if sitting is like this, what would it feel like if you put your computer on the ground, put a pillow under your chest and sat up like this to type on it, right? So now the head's moving back, the spine's going in extension and the hips aren't creased. You're not flexing the hips either. 
So laying flat on the belly on the floor, right? And so one of the lucky things about what's happening right now is that we can take meetings from the family room or from the kitchen or from the office at home and lay down, right? So it's, it, and what is seen in the meeting is still just my head, right? But I can put my body in a different position. I'm talking to people about what's the opposite of sitting, right? It's getting the head and the chest to move into extension, support that in a stable way, you know, use the arms to prop up, use the legs. Um, but if you think that today for eight hours I sat, how can I just for a few minutes, either in the morning, Jessica, like you're saying, if you can move the body a few opposite ways that it's going to then move all day, and then in the evening before bed, you just start to create these small routines where things can still get accomplished. You can still watch your favorite Netflix. You can still play with the kids, but you're not taking these habitual movements over and over and over that are allowed. Oh, you want to be hunched? Cool. Well, <laughs> I'm hunched, you know? Right. No, great points. And Ryan, what are, I guess you probably see a lot of that with people coming in for you, for your gym as well. So, you know, what are some of the things people can be doing at home to, to reverse that in addition to what, what Kate's just mentioned? Yeah, I think Kate, what Kate mentioned is great because you have to be aware of the posture that you're in all day long. And that's, a, that's the hardest thing to break is just being aware of when you're doing it, right? Um, some things that, that you might be able to do, I'm going to try and show this a little bit if I can. Um, but if you're at a desk and um, you're sitting a lot, you know, your hip flexors are going to get very tight. I have this little gardening pad because my knees, I have knees that hurt to kneel on hard surfaces. So if you have a little pad at a desk and you just pop that down right there, you can easily get all of your work done on a computer by stretching and stretch your hip flexors at the same time. So just taking a one knee stance, I'm trying to show this here if I can. Just a one knee stance, you're trying to tuck your pelvis underneath you here, lean forward just a little bit, and then you can still do, you can still do all of your work on your computer while essentially stretching your hip flexors. That, that's something that I recommend you know, many times throughout the day. And then also getting up a lot. Um, it's not just the amount of sitting and standing. It's the amount of getting up and down, changing positions. That's really good for your health and your posture. Um, so that's really good. And then um, I would say she touched on a lot with the posture already. Uh, oh, there's one, there's one thing you can do. There's a quick exercise you can do. Again, I'm trying to get in a good position here. You are like a quarantine pro at this Zoom stuff. I'm so impressed. I'm trying, right? So <laughs> hopefully you can see me here. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to lunge your head, keep your head, uh, lunge it forward, tuck your chin, and then bring it up. Okay. So that motion right there, it kind of gets you back into pulling your head back into that good posture. Um, that's something easily you can do if you start feeling tension um, and then just rolling the shoulders forward and backward those are those are some easy things that you can do you know from from your desk at home anyway. I want awesome. to can I add to, can I add someone yeah, but we, we are at time so we want okay. to make sure we've got a couple questions to get to um, if you got something to interject real quick Kate I'd love to hear what you have to say yeah, I just wanted to say, as Ryan was showing those, those are all really great movements. Uh, someone commented, how long should I stay on the knee? Uh, and just a clarification for folks that have knee issue and can't bear weight on the knee, you can take that same side lunge with your butt still on a chair, right? So you just come to the edge of the chair and slide, you shift your body. I don't have a chair in here, or I would try to show, but I think Ryan is nodding as though he understands what I'm saying. If he wants to, you, you just take that same, yep, and you let one leg drop down, so it's as though you're in that lunge, but there's no, ah. and you can stay like that for as long as that feels good. Back hip out of flexion the whole time you're working. And then you just switch sides. Okay, well, that, that's it. We're just having you two on every week now. We're just gonna work out with you. This is what's happening. Sounds good. <laughs> I love this. So we had several other really great questions. We are a couple, we're just right past time. So I just real quickly, we'll touch on these um, because I promised we would. Um, any recommendations for in-home core strengthening exercises that might bring more joy than crunches or planks? 
10 second answer. Tons. You try to do it in 10 seconds because I don't know if I can do it in 10 seconds. Oh, God. Go, Ryan. <laughs> well, never do. I, I would say I would not recommend crunchers ever, hardly at all. Um, but if you, you already know about planks, no one likes to do planks. Here's a great one that you can do. Oh, it's so hard to get the video right on it. I don't know if I can answer this. Can I send a video we'll, to people? We will count that can in 10 video. seconds. Can I send I can, I'll try it. Let me try for 10 seconds. If you put okay. flat on your back, right? You're gonna wanna tone, you're gonna wanna tone the belly. So you draw your low belly in and up so that there's some stabilization there already, but don't flatten the low back all the way onto the floor. You wanna keep a little bit of curve in your low back. You don't want the lumbar to go into flexion. You want it to stay neutral. And so with that tone in the belly, then it's just a really, you take the arms overhead and the legs up. You can do one arm at a time, you can do both arms, you can do both legs but it's lifting and lowering the legs. So the spine stays neutral. So the spine doesn't crunch, but the arms and legs lift and lower so that the core has to support the weight of the arms and the legs. And the key is it's not like the old aerobic videos. You don't need to kick the leg all the way up into the air so your foot's pointing at the ceiling. The just a couple of inches. You just lift a leg a couple of inches, set it down. It's actually way harder. You guys are excited right now, do it. You'll curse me later. Right? Just a couple inches rotating the feet, just a couple inches rotating the arms. And you try to keep that low belly in and up. And with the arms, don't let the chest pop up, right? So you're trying to keep the spine as stable as possible and just lift and lower the arms and legs. There's so much more in that that I have to say, if anything doesn't feel good when you're doing it, stop doing it and email me or Ryan. Love that and, and great explanation. And what I love about this team that we've got here today is we've got um, a variety of different ways of learning, right? Someone did just pop in a comment, please send a video. I'm a visual learner. Um, but, and I love, I love in yoga. I love that, you know, while I'm in yoga, I'm, I'm getting instruction and I'm hearing I'm an auditory learner. So for me, it's, it's great. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a combo. So I love that we've had the two of you from these differing perspectives coming together and sharing. Um, we've got a comment from Christine in my counseling practice. I'm working on combining with my personal training skills for the mental health benefit of exercise in the way to decrease anxiety and depression symptoms. Great information. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, we've just got brilliant, lots of, lots of great comments over here. You guys have just been amazing today. I want to thank you so much. Um, so real quickly, if you want to just let everyone know, let's start uh, with Kate, you know, how can people follow you online, reach out um, and work with you? Yeah, absolutely. So the studio play, play is space is called uh, Cherokee Yoga. Uh, it's named for the neighborhood that it's in. I'm down in South City area. Um, website's Cherokee Yoga STL and the social media is Cherokee Yoga um, STL on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow us all there. And actually starting tomorrow, we're starting um, online group classes. The, the platform here, all the group classes are what we call give what you can. So they're all effectively donation, but it's not just money. So if it's skill set or object or trade, you can do that. Um, and so starting tomorrow, if you go to the website, cherokeeyogastl.com and you go to the online resources, you'll see links for those classes. If you guys want to check out a group class, if that seems to be where you're at with how you want to learn more about your body, um, we do then offer a lot of one-on-one -on -one and, and therapeutic and performance-based movement. It's been a little tricky to figure out how to do that because it's a very hands-on practice, but I would love to be in dialogue with you about what the needs are and how we move forward and get back into a relationship doing that one-on-one -on -one stuff. So, Kate Burris, Cherokee Yoga, thank you so much for your time and your information. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. And Ryan Morgan, uh, tell us about Pursuit Fitness and the things that you've got going on there. I know you've transitioned to online. You're doing some great things to support people during this time as well. Yeah, so we, we run a small group training here in either a four-person setting or a 12-person setting. Uh, and we've, we're doing it all online right now. Um, we are offering a seven day trial of what that online experience looks like. So if you just go to pursuitfitness.com, um, you'll see a link right as you open up on the main page there. If, if you want to try us out or if you know somebody, we, we really specialize in working with people that are middle aged. So if you know somebody that that needs help getting started, um, you know, and, and is in that age range, that's more of the people that we work with. Awesome. Awesome. And so, yeah, so not only can you get a video about what to do for your core, you can check out all kinds of videos with Ryan online there. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, and, thanks and again. I'll, 
I'll send you a video. We've, we've recorded exactly what Kate uh, is talking about. I'd send you a video to share with this community if you want. Yeah. Oh man, that would be fantastic. Thank you both so much. Yeah, that's wonderful. I uh, really appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, I thank you for sticking around past time for everyone that joined us today. Just really appreciate it. Um, hope you've enjoyed this conversation. Love the interaction in the chat. So definitely keep those questions coming and we'll see you next time. Um, Want to give a shout out again. Thank you so much, Casey, Jessica, Kate, for helping to pull this all together. And thank you for joining us for the conversation at, at Home and Health. Join us next Friday at noon when registered dietitian Shannon Busher joins us to discuss diet culture during quarantine and how to eat more mindfully. We'll see you then. I like it. Thanks, Amanda. Yep. Thank you. Oh, that was great. I needed that. <laughs>